I do apologize that I'm coughing and spluttering. Um, my COVID test was okay, but I do suggest that anyone watching online should stay at least two meters away from their screens just to be on the safe side. Now, uh, I think it was last year on the, one of the online Rome things, um, I highlighted that the fourth standard has got no enumeration word set. And uh, I suggested that possibly this would be awfully useful. And so uh, I felt under some vague obligation to actually suggest something that um, might, might do the trick. So just reviewing what an enumeration is, it's, a, it's basically a data type um, which contains a set of named members. Uh, when you use one of those members, they act like a, a constant integer. And if you create a variable um, of an, uh, which has a type of an enumeration, then that variable should contain only one of its members. So why do we use enumerations in, in our um, main application, of something like 60 of them, they're very, very useful. Uh, number one is for the elimination of magic numbers. And uh, number two is to basically alert you if you try to save a, a number which is not a member into a, a variable or value um, which is supposedly of the data type of an enumeration. So when I say the fourth standard is no in num word, um, actually in VFX fourth, we do have uh, two slightly different in num words, uh, but those are uh, designed uh, to make it uh, a little bit easier to bring things in from C header files. And so there is a, a highly simplified example, a, a cooked, cooked example of uh, a, a, a VFX um, enum um, function there. And if you're a fourth programmer, you immediately um, start sort of getting the collie wobbles or something like that because, <laughs> because we have comma separators, we have equal sign assignment, we have right to left assignment, and we have C style comments. So when you see a chunk of this in your own code, it really stands out like a sore thumb or, in my case, a red nose or something like that. <laughs> uh, however, until very recently, we were using this, this expression um, extensively. There you are. There you are. If you haven't got anything else, this is what you use. What, we, what would we like to have? Uh, well, I belong to this uh, rare society these days of people who actually only type with one finger. And <laughs> this means that I really don't like typing too much. So uh, everything that I do has to be a minimalist solution to cut down on my typing. So my proposed solution there, um, and the example uh, shown below, um, just the uh, the um, less than less than and greater than greater than uh, signs there are just an example which are easy to type. We could put anything in there really. So at the start of the enumeration, we we uh, are going to have a name for the enumeration every time. Um, enumerations, as we, as with C, by default start at zero, um, and we've got the standard fourth comments. Um, but when we want to uh, set a particular value, um, in other words, to override the default um, enumerated value, we can put any fourth expression in the left-hand side there. And the uh, incrementation carries on from where we were before. So this is really, this looks really nice and fourth-like because we have white space separators the equal sign has disappeared. We have left to right assignment. We got proper comments and we can use any fourth expression 
uh, so as to make the original intention uh, of uh, what we were trying to uh, express as clear as we can. So I thought about how to implement this in the simplest possible way. And we note that between the, uh, between the uh, bits that uh, enclose the enumeration, all existing fourth words work exactly as normal. All we have to do is we have to, do, have to deal with words which do not already exist. That is the enumeration members. And so I had the idea that we really need a recognizer that deals with unrecognized words, an unrecognizer. And I was rather pleased with this idea because I, I hadn't actually written a new recognizer before. So let's just review what, what the state of play is with, with uh, recognizers. Um, I, I think the first mention of recognizers was by Bernd in about 10 years ago, you know, something like that. That's the first one I, I can find. And um, I actually didn't understand what he was aiming for at the time. Uh, but they were adopted by VFX Forth from 2019. And basically what, what, ha what happens is that um, each passed word in the input stream is passed to uh, the list of recognizers one by one until one of them accepts it. And so uh, I thought, oh, I wonder what all the recognizers are by default in, uh, in VFX Forth. And you've got this rather nice word which tells you what they are, dot recognizers. So on the left-hand side there, uh, we've got rec find, which deals with pre-existing fourth words. And then I made this wonderful discovery that uh, we've got rec voc dot, which deals with uh, specifying a word by the vocabulary name with a dot and then the name of the word. And since I discovered that, I discovered all sorts of useful things to do with it. So I, I just hope it doesn't go away. And then rec num uh, deals with uh, what? <laughs> so rec num deals with uh, standard uh, single and double length integers and then I'm using 64-bit floating point so rec SSE floats deals with floating point numbers and each of these recognizers can do three different things depending on where you are uh, whether you're interpreting compiling or postponing and it's it turns out to be really quite easy to create new recognizers and the really cool thing is that you can attach and detach recognizers as you wish. And so here is my definition of the start of the enumeration. So obviously you can only do <coughs> an enumeration when you're interpreting. <coughs> and the next thing I do then is to um, add my... Um, enumeration recognizer to the recognizer stack and this plus stack bot basically means that it goes in so that uh, it looks for this last in the in the order of precedence um, so I initialize um, I, I mentioned earlier that by default we start with a zero so I initialize my uh, enumeration value then I create the name of the enumeration um, I'm, I wanted uh, a method of being able to see uh, what the permitted members of an enumeration were. So I started a list there and initialized it. And then at the bottom there, I've got the usual mechanism uh, for dealing with um, compiling and interpreting um, a child. And... Um, Initially, this is very simple, but if you do it by this method, it's easy to add interesting complications later. And then the, the end of the enumeration simply removes the uh, recognizer from the recognizer stack. Uh, now, uh, my only rule there in terms of the fourth expression is that it must produce only one item on the stack. And if it doesn't, then it throws a wobbly. It complains. Um, 
but actually, by the time you come to test it here, um, there are actually two other items on the stack as well. So uh, you're doing the little test just to make sure there is either only there is either nothing on the stack or there is one item on the stack. Anything else then um, throws a wobbly. Um, initially, uh, all the uh, recognizer actions do in, compila in compilation. You just uh, <coughs> uh, do the um, 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 action and basically have a constant there. Um, when we are creating the, the new recognizer, basically what you're doing is you're passing the address of uh, a three-way structure um, containing three execution tokens. In this particular case, we're only interested in the interpretation action, so the other, the other two don't, don't, don't matter. So looking at what the interpretation action actually does, First of all, have we specified a new enumeration value? And if we have, then we, we set it. And then we, we create the name of the new member and set its value and increment our, our value ready for the next one. And then, because we're making a list here, uh, we add our newly created execution token to our list. And just as the same with the enumeration itself, the members also have the possibility of different uh, compilation and interpret actions just in case we need to uh, add complexity later on. And uh, at the moment, basically, uh, they, they do nothing. Um, but uh, here, having added the list there, you can see uh, that you can use a show chain on the list to to tell you um, what the uh, members of the enumeration are, which is really quite useful. That was the initial um, arrangement, which, which was the simplest possible one. But of course, you have the possibility of doing other more useful things. For example, uh, the name of the enumeration could be used to create a special type of a value, which only allows you to set member numbers into that value. So uh, you will remember that the enumeration contained a one, but it didn't contain a two. So if you try and put a two into that, then um, it, it tells you it doesn't like it. But we still want to uh, be able to uh, see the members, and so uh, we add a new modifier to our modifier list, which in itself, if you remember, is an enumeration. So we can do members of test and, um, and go back to where we were before. And then we can imagine another modifier to check whether a particular number is a member of an enumeration. And that could be quite useful in, in some circumstances. So um, the number one is a member of test and, um, and so leaves true, and the number two leaves false. The other thing we could possibly do, which might be more useful, um, when, I, when I looked at where I'd use these, um, I discovered that um, I was far more likely to have an enumeration value within a structure rather than as a single isolated value. And so my next idea was to actually make testinum uh, create a field of a structure um, with similar properties to uh, what I already had as an enumeration value. So it's pretty simple, really, particularly by, by comparison with the previous paper. So I hope you like it, chaps. Oh no, it's, it's similar to. I haven't got the source code here, but it's similar to uh, similar to the way you you do um, uh, modifiers on on a value, for example. So you know that I I'd, I'd prepared for that by having the separate interpret and uh, compile actions, and so instead of just doing something very simple on those, uh, you you check for a modifier mm -hmm. first and then do something if the modifier is present. Uh, well, I mean, it, 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 
if you use one of these, then um, no matter what, what I do to fiddle around with it here, by the, by the time it gets to your compiler, your compiler will, all, all it will see is a single number. And so that is what it will actually compile when you use it. Unless, of course, I, I use a modifier on it, which I might do. Um, no, not necessarily. No. Um, I think the, the, the runtime checking is important, really. So if, you, if you, in the, you're in the middle of the program and you, you try to write 23 in, into an enumeration which only allows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then you need to know about it. Or you need to have a default action which actually sets it to 1. I did think about actually introducing a word uh, default which specifies uh, which of the enumeration members uh, you should use in in the event that you try to set an invalid value. Yeah, well, not not just the range, but individually um, double checking that that it's actually a member. Yeah, yeah, I wondered about that. It's it's actually rather similar to the structure type of thing in some respects as to what you're doing with it. Yeah, but I mean the my the main aim of my exercise was one to make it look look like proper four. So I didn't feel a bit at sea when I was using it. And two, to make it as, as concise as possible.